Okay, so let's have a look here at this flight that goes from Paris, Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle. And they do have de Gaulle over there. Um, they're flying a Boeing 777-228. They're only at 35,000 feet. They departed late uh, by 20 minutes, but they will arrive early by over 10 minutes. And they're taking the route from Paris to Atlanta, which is in Georgia in the United States, the Southern United States, by way of Eastern England, Eastern Scotland, Central Iceland. Now let's look at this. So they they head out due north, northwest. Remember, where they are going is directly southwest on a globe, more or less directly southwest. To get there, they are going north, northwest, and they go up through, well, Let's see, they don't even get close to London. They're really far east of it. Um, they go up through Petersburg. They cross directly over Leeds. They take a turn to the north from there, um, heading through uh, Scotland. They can almost see Inverness out of the uh, windows on the left. And then they cross over central Iceland, where finally they take a heading no longer due almost directly north. They start going west, and they travel westward just a little while, and they take a turn for the south, entering Canada, just touching the very tippy top of Newfoundland and Labrador. So just barely just catching the very cusp, the tippy top northernmost point on Newfoundland. And then they're coming down almost directly due south. Really it's south, southwest, and they cross through Detroit, Royal Oak to be specific. They cross over Dayton, okay? And then they actually take a heading due east so now they're going south, southeast, and we'll track their progress, I guess, but you can see that they're due to arrive in Atlanta by way of Detroit, by way of the tippy top of Newfoundland and Labrador, through Greenland, which is on this map, a, it, it should be a continent if it's really that size. They cross over Greenland, a huge amount of land on Greenland. Heck, they'd be flying over Greenland for hours there, according to this. Um, they cross right over Iceland, over the volcanoes for some reason. Can't imagine why. Um after they flew directly north for quite a while. And the uh, flight duration, we'll take a look at that. But it's Air France. And uh, why would they do that? So here I'm taking a look. Let's look at London to Sao Paulo, Brazil. All right, they are taking a different route, supposedly. Um, and their flight time is vastly different. Same with Madrid to Buenos Aires. So if you look at those flights, they go down the coast of Africa. And just very, very different. They cross over some islands here in the case of Barcelona, 
Barcelona and the um, track takes them uh, from Western Africa to Brazil. So the question that I have is, we have this lower track that you see here, and then we have this upper track, which we saw in the Paris to Chaudegal. But we don't have a tweener. I don't see very many tweeners, you know. Um, it's a disparity that I find very curious. Um, we're going to take a look at these flight paths in a little more detail as far as the um, um, the miles. Is that a stop? Did that have a stop? I don't know. But um, we're going to look at the miles and the time duration, okay, in comparable um, aircraft. So I would say if it's a 777, it'd be comparable. I'm going to look into what is the difference in the the suffix, um, you know, like 777ER, 777F1H. I've been on those and I, I know that the difference is pretty slight in terms of seating and things like that. Um, to me, the planes didn't look that different, although there is one, I think it's the ER, that has the double decker, you know, that might affect it. Um, so we'll take that into consideration. But basically, what I'm looking at is if there's any funny business going on, which I know that there is because of that curve and how will it look on a flat, on a flat map. Well, I'm going to draw it out right now and we'll see. Okay, so take a good look at this. And voila, you will see here how it would look on a flat map. But I'm also curious about the globe. How would it look on a globe? Well, as you can see on a globe, it, you know, just like this map, it really doesn't make sense. So here we're seeing, we're seeing one big curve up. Okay, up and over. And on the globe, we're seeing that, but then it juts over to the side, kind of strangely. And here's where the programming kicks in. UAP, you are so stupid. Don't you know that you take a classroom globe and you take a string on it and you put the string on one point and you put the string on the other point and you tighten it up so it snaps against that glorious globe and that's your flight path you stupid idiot hey look i know i too have been in a classroom for more than a few hours <laughs> and it, it's it's not explaining it really. Now, do I expect to see perfectly straight lines on either map? No, I don't. But the flat earth map has straighter lines than your globe map or your globe map derivatives.